everyone, this is Dan. Welcome back to a new video. I know it's been a while. I've been very hectic over the um, summer period. I've been away and then very busy with work and such, but now we'll be trying to get back into making videos once again. So for this um, particular video, we're going to be talking about a nice little trick that you can use in Vols Legato and finger rolling to help you get these extra little notes out to make your legato sound a little bit more interesting or different than the usual. We're in the key of E minor. Now I did post a little clip at the start of this video and give an example of this lick being used. So E minor. Or E natural minor. So let's play it on the high E first. Now on the B. Okay, now there are a particular a couple of um, areas here where you have these symmetrical patterns, okay, or symmetrical interval um, areas for your fingers that so that they have the same series of intervals on on the two strings. For example, this you can see I'm using the um, first note. Then we have one fret gap, and then the next two notes in a row. So five, seven, eight on the um, B in high E. Now we have seven, eight, and ten on the B in high E. And then seven, sorry, the eight, ten, and twelve on the on the B and high A as well. Okay, so they're very symmetrical, and we want this to be, to be able to be there for um, for the purposes of this video to make these sort of things work. So we're going to start off by playing the first note on the B, the E note here, fifth fret. We'll then hammer on to the seventh and then eighth. Uh, feel free to use your third and fourth finger if it's more comfortable. But I do use my second and third personally. So we hammer on five, seven, eight. Then I will use this rolling motion on my third finger to then play the eighth fret on the high E. I use an upstroke for this. Okay. So when we play the top note, if we let it ring, we'll get this sound. Okay. We won't get this sound. So you can hear there you have two two notes ringing the eighth fret of the B and the eighth fret of the high E. We don't want that. We just want this. So when I use my upstroke there, I am also muting with that motion the previous note played on the B. Okay, it's a very delicate motion, but you kind of want to use your thumb to touch the, the strings when you pick it. Okay. So that's a little tip for you. And then we'll play a downstroke back on the B, rolling the finger back. Um, pulling off from the 8th to the 7th to the 5th. I actually don't really move my finger once I've rolled it. Okay. It kind of stays in the position. I'm not really doing that or anything. I'm just kind of keeping it still. As you can hear it. But we do have to roll it or flatten it against the high E and the B. Okay. So when we um, play the high E on the 8th fret, we then play... Eight, pulling off to seven, pulling off to fifth on the B. Now we have the next position that we want to get to here, which sounds like this. So to get to this from the previous position, you want to go from the fifth fret, which is the last note here. You want to slide up to the seventh fret and then hammer on the next two notes. We're not picking at all; we're just sliding up and then hammering on. So we have this. Okay. And then we'll be rolling this little finger again over on the 10th fret, so it'll be 8, sorry, 7, 8, 10 on the B, rolling to the 10th fret of the B, of the high E. Again the upstroke, and then the downstroke, back on the 10th fret of the B, pulling off to the 8th and 7th. Okay, and then the same thing applies, we slide from the 7th to the 8th on that last note of the second um, position, 8th to 10th to 12th, and then we have this high note here, rolling the high, sorry, rolling the little finger, so we have um, 8, 10, 12, 12 on the high, 12 on the B, pulling off to 8, sorry, pulling off to 10th, and then 8. Okay, that sort of thing. 
That's the kind of the end result that we want, okay? We really want to be able to repeat that up and down like so. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're going for here. So you also might want to mix in other legato sections, for example, before this, to try and make this whole thing sound a little bit more interesting. So, for example, we have this. Play it a bit faster. And again. And again, you can do the same thing up here. Like that sort of thing. You know, you can add these little parts in, basically just to kind of break things up so we're not just doing this all the time. I mean, that sort of thing is fine to practice over and over again, fair enough, but um, you know, you want to do, want to mix in these extra legato parts and break things up, okay? So, again, you can do it every time on each different position. Just to try and break things up. As I said, hopefully you have fun with this little trick. Um, it does add in that extra note, you know, because normally... Okay, so I keep thinking I'm finished here, but um, yeah, normally from this note here, we might want to go to this note, okay? So you might want to do something like this. But instead, we're going to be using this note. So you could also practice maybe mixing those together. That sort of thing, you know? That Again, that's probably another lick within itself that you can pick up on. You can do the same thing with the other patterns, you know, kind of a... That sort of thing. Whatever you want. A bit of a tongue twister for the fingers though, those sort of things, but great to practice. Anyway, I'll leave this video there. Hope you enjoy these licks and find some use for them. I'll see you soon.